Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, once again doing another mover review in the month of October. I want to review a horror cult comedy that came out on May 27, 1988, Memorial Day weekend. It's very self-explanatory. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> um, plain and simple. It's about a pack of alien creatures from outer space who came to a small town called Crescent Crow. You know, they actually have their own uh, spaceship that's inside a circus tent that's disguised into it. So it's almost like there's going to be a circus in town. But these alien creatures are circus clowns and they're going around murdering people. Of course, the authorities thought that part of this was a prank, which apparently it ain't. So this was created by the Chicago brothers, uh, Charles, Stephen, and Edward. So this was like a homage to all these uh, 50's uh, B-movies that we had. Yeah, there's like tons of them. So it's, it's, it really works uh, so well in the 80's. <laughs> I mean, it was so popular, and I can see why people love it, because it's silly, outrageous, crazy, wacky, wild, I mean, ludicrous, but hey, it works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it was so popular that uh, the Jakarta Brothers was planning on doing a sequel to this, and they were doing a uh, long-awaited one, but from what I heard, though, because they were in development hell ever since the original film release. Um, in fact, um, I heard that Fox was actually uh, interested in in working on the movie, but now that Fox is being bought by Disney, they uh, they canceled it. So that sucks. Although even before that, um, they were going to turn this into a franchise. Um, like they were going to do like four sequels and and then they were going to do a TV series for Sci-Fi Channel which is SYFY yeah Sci-Fi Channel hoping this would be good for for those who um, appreciate it well they never happen they are probably find a way to come up with uh, a new idea I mean especially nowadays with with clowns being popular again I mean, of course, with Stephen King's It, and we also got Stephen King's It 2 to join in. But hey, but who doesn't love clowns? I mean, I actually did love clowns, though. I mean, especially those creepy ones. <laughs> However, my mom doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't even like the circus. But okay. All right. Um, so the movie stars uh, Grant Kramer, Suzanne Snyder, John Allen Nelson, John Burnon. Yes, John Burnon, no longer with us, but he was in films like um, Dirty Harry, where he played the mayor. Uh, he played Fletcher in the movie The Outlaw of Joyce Wells, and he was also in the movie Animal House, who played Dean Wormer. <laughs> Uh, Michael S. Siegel, Peter uh, Lassi, Royal Daniel, Charles uh, Chicago, yeah, one of the, the brothers, Claire Baldo, and, you wouldn't believe this, Christopher Titus, yeah, the stand up comedian who went on to do his, his own TV show, Titus, that was on Fox, only lasted three seasons, but it was a great show. I used to watch that. Yeah, he's still uh, doing some stand-up comedy. This was actually his feature film debut. Yeah, he played the the nerdy uh, Bob McCree, who goes around uh, you know, collecting all cans of beer. Yeah, and he almost got caught by you know, Officer Mooney, yeah, who was played by John Burnham. That's yeah, the one with the nerdy glasses. That's him. Yeah, and he was killed, of course. Sorry. Sorry to give that away. Anyway, um, 
Yep, it's written by Charles and Stephen Chicado, which all the other brothers have produced, and it's directed by Stephen Chicado. The movie began set outside of a small town called Crescent Crow. We meet two teenagers, Mike Tobacco, yes, that's his last name, Tobacco, along with his girlfriend, Debbie Stone, both played by Grant Kramer and Suzanne Snyder. They are parked along with all the other couples at Lover's Lane when they spotted a strange glowing effect that appears to be like a comet, but in reality it's actually a spaceship that's appearing, which turned out to be a circus tent, which an old farmer named Gene Green, along with his dog Pooh, he had named after Winnie the Pooh Bear, had spotted um, what they thought it would be a Halley's Comet, but it's not. So once they went inside in the neck of the woods, they found the circus tent and hoping that there's going to be a new circus in town. Well, what seems to be, because they were going to you know, have fun in the circus, uh, hoping to get free passes, but then his, then his dog Pooh disappeared as it was captured by a mysterious alien creature dressed like a circus clown. Yeah, he took, captured the, the dog with the nets. Gene was trying to find his dog and then suddenly he touches the electrical um, wire. Yeah, he got electrocuted and then suddenly the, the clown takes out a zap gun and zaps him. And disappears. Or what he's going to turn into a cotton candy uh, cocoon. Yeah. But thereafter, Mike and Debbie had spotted the circus tent themselves, and once they got inside the structure, they discover a complex interior with elevators and various bizarre rooms. Yes, they even have some buttons that create all these uh, goofy noises. Yeah. And that's where they found, like, a gelatin green encased in all these cotton candy cocoons of many people. So they spotted them. Yeah, they actually did spot it, uh, the farmer in one of those and even the dog. And once uh, several of the clowns uh, came by, he actually took out uh, a popcorn gun and shoots popcorn at both Mike and Debbie. <laughs> So they're about to escape um, from the circus tent. Yeah. And then uh, they're about to go all the way to the police station to inform them. That's where we meet uh, Deputy uh, Dave Hansen, played by John Allen Nelson, who happens to be Debbie's ex-boyfriend. Joins in with his um, older, but sort of an asshole, named Deputy Curtis Mooney. Yeah, he's a very tough guy, played by John Vernon. Um, Mooney, however, was feeling very skeptical about this whole thing, believing that this, the whole story that they're telling is, is a hoax. So they couldn't believe their actual story, but they really are telling the truth. So they're taking Debbie home. You know, she had to take a long shower, 20 minutes though. <laughs> And yeah, she had to take off her clothes, which is filled with popcorn. Next thing you know, the popcorn actually moves, especially in the clothes hamper, which then turns into a, a clown-like creature that's like one of those deadly spawns, you know. And it was, uh, it was going after Debbie, and then sooner or later, all the other um, clowns appeared. Yeah, they're going to start appearing even more. But I know, that was later in the film. Um, so then, um, Mike and Dave uh, returned to the woods, and they found out that the circus tent had banished. So, of course, uh, Dave had to handcuff uh, Mike, but then later he's going to you know, take out the handcuffs after he finds out what's going on. Um, because it only leaves a large crater in its place, and that's where they go back to Lover's Lane, and then he's, 
Dave spotted uh, one of the cars uh, that has uh, that's filled with cotton candy. So it assumes that yes, um, it was Bobby McGee that got killed in the car. Yes, and Bobby McGee was played by Christopher Titus. Yeah, one of you know one of them that got killed. So anyway. So they continue to find out where these clowns are, and that's where um, they spotted uh, one of them that's actually, uh, well, at this rate, uh, playing all these shadow puppets uh, that are trying to uh, to enjoy the all the uh, all the pedestrians uh, who are at the bus stop. You know, they're waiting for the bus so they could leave. Um, yeah, they're actually impre impressing them with these um, sh shadow act you know like you know they can create like a woman or or um, bunnies or so but then next thing you know they actually created a a dinosaur and and eats them all up yes hard to believe that a shadow uh, dinosaur can actually eat them all up and just put them in place <laughs> yeah that was really fucked up um, Mike uh, wanted to destroy that clown to just having to actually to drive by with uh, Dave, but actually crashes. So anyway, they had to go back to uh, Debbie's house see if Debbie's all right. Um, but also, all the clowns uh, once up in town, you know, going around uh, murdering people. Uh, yes, they actually went to a local fast food joint. Yeah, Big Top Burgers, that's what it was called, yeah. One of the clowns actually tried to impress uh, a little girl. Even that clown uh, actually put some popcorn inside the, the dumpster where an employee was just taking out the garbage and then suddenly he hears noises and then then he got taken directly through the dumpster and yeah, got killed. Um, then there was more clowns uh, going straight to a uh, drugstore, a local drugstore, going around uh, trashing the place, grabbing all this other stuff, discovering like you know some powder or or some shaving cream, and yeah, the owner of of the drugstore was feeling very nervous and and scared, as you could tell by by his reaction. So he was ready to call the cops, but of course Mooney doesn't believe in what they saw. So that's why he's just acting all tough and everything. <laughs> that goes on for hours. Um, of course, uh, the clown sexy uh, goes around killing other people from door to door too. Like they they were going around delivering pizzas and they zapped them with their guns. Then they actually brought in a a Valentine uh, gift, hoping this was going to be for their for that uh, lady's um, husband, but of course she's going to be zapped. That sort of thing. Um, uh, but then next thing you know, uh, that one clown uh, went inside the police station because uh, Mooney did capture two punks. He was ready to become, and you wouldn't believe this, because after he captures that one clown, he was arresting him. It was going to take him directly to the jail cell. Uh, yeah, he, he actually pulled a trick on him by, you know, taking off his hands, which that would have been his gloves. But then his hands appeared again. Uh, then takes out uh, one of those uh, birthday blowers and just uh, blew at him and captures his neck. And the next thing you know, he becomes a ventriloquist dummy. Just as uh, Dave had came by to the police station, and that's where <laughs> where he just puts uh, his hand directly to his back, and you know, he's dressed up like the dummy, you know, putting all these uh, cutesy dots and all these lines on on his uh, chin, and then he says, "Don't worry, Dave. All we want to do is kill you." Yeah, takes out uh, 
his hand out of his back, all that blood came out, wraps it up, and then, then um, Dave just shoots him uh, twice in on his uh, chest, and then later shot him in the nose, and that's where he spins around and and explodes. Uh, I also forgot to mention that yes, there was one clown that was on a bike. And he actually went straight into those uh, bikers. And one biker, yeah, this big one, just. And then he takes his bike and just destroys it, you yeah, steps on it and everything. And then, next thing you know, that clown just jumps up in the air and comes back up. And he has all these boxing gloves. And this is where the biker says, What are you going to do? Knock my block off? Yep, yeah, he knocks him up and is. And it, and it turns into a head decapitation. <laughs> this is a PG-13 horror film, by the way, so it, it really worked. Yeah, so it's not R-rated. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it, it's just so crazy. It's just it works. So then um, the clowns have captured Debbie. They zapped her with. Um, with one of the guns, but instead of becoming a, a cocoon a cotton candy, it, it turns into a, a ball, you know, like a balloon ball. They put her inside uh, their their buggy that they had, which also they had another buggy which was going around collecting all these cotton candy cocoons around town, yeah, because they got them all. Wow, this is going on. <laughs> so both... Uh, also to note, though, that... Uh, Mike had, um, had went up to the Terenzi brothers, you know, the ones who, uh, who rented a ice cream truck, you know, called JoJo's Ice Cream. And the Terenzi brothers, by the way, are both played by Michael S. Siegel and Peter Logotsky. Yeah, they they were definitely a comic relief. I mean, they're just going around, you know, you know, just you know, picking up some chicks. Yeah. And, and I know uh, Mike actually tricks those two because they wanted to go to Debbie's house to, to find where she's at. And and then he was like saying that Debbie's have roommates, e even the ones with big boobs. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And they, they were really starting to become more horny than ever. <laughs> so, okay. But anyway, they, they chase after the clowns um, that captured Debbie. And they go straight all the way into an amusement park, and that's where all these clowns um, have threw all these uh, ascetic pies at the security guard. I heard that originally they were going to get um, legend um, performer uh, Soupy Sales, and he was going to be the one that was going to be chosen to to get pies all over himself. Yeah, because he was known for for getting pies on his face, but but they couldn't get him because due to budgetary reasons and because they had to pay for his uh, plane ticket, so it's too bad. So they just had a different actor to play the part. The security guard says, "What are you gonna do with those pies, boys?" And that's when they start throwing all those excited pies at him till he melts into what looks to be like a, a Sunday. Yes, I mean, even that one clown actually put a cherry on top. Oh my god. That is just so bizarre. So they went inside the fun house so just to find where Debbie's at because she's been captured by those clowns. Um, yeah, just making sure that they'll be safe somewhere because they're going around touching all these uh, buttons or any other yeah they, they have they went inside the room that has all that fog and then they went to another room uh, like they had like several doors and yes there was like so many of them yeah there's even one door that that just moves around too so then the, they were captured by the clowns till the Terenzi brothers who were captured um, by two female clowns yeah even the ones with big boobs <laughs> Because they wound up in, inside the uh, the play ball room. Yeah, and it looked like they were getting kissed by them. 
but then they took out their, their ice cream truck and it crouches in once those clowns have captured them and next thing you know because they're trying the Trinity Brothers was trying to fool them into thinking that this is their master to tell them, them to lead them along and yeah I, I know those doors uh, that they tried to escape yes because there's like so many doors like another door another door another door that Mike was trying to do uh, once uh, they got uh, Debbie out of um, that same room that he discovered last time yes where they had a lot of cotton candy cocoons and then you know, Debbie was inside the, the ball they captured that and, and of course uh, Dave shot it so they escape going over the place uh, next thing you know there was Clownzilla yes Clownzilla appears uh, and that's when they attacked the Terenzi brothers they, yeah they threw the the ice cream truck and yes they even said we can't it's rented they, they threw it in and then the uh, ice cream truck explodes um, they thought that the Terenzi brothers died but actually they were hidden inside the freezer well, so lucky for them yeah yes I'm gonna spoil the surprise uh, at the end but I'm gonna get to it I know originally it was gonna be like a different ending that they were gonna choose like yes they were gonna kill off uh, Dave and the Terenzi brothers uh, so they actually had an alternative ending where that actually did happen but but they wanted to change it because they feel like you know that ending didn't work yeah they wanted to go for a realistic ending but yeah because it seems like nowadays they always want to go for that ending and as we know they they had to change it because they wanted the ending to be so much better and more upbeat and that's true they should for a movie like this it works anyway Dave uh, offered the, the couple to to escape as soon as they can while he could st stop uh, Clownzilla by shooting him hoping he'll be able to shoot them in the nose I mean he did have a shotgun you know shooting one of them but then he, he uses his uh, pistol to, to shoot him as directly as he can hoping to get to the nose and, and which is going to be hard for him because he got captured by the Clownzilla and once they escape you know Mike and Debbie Soon the uh, the spaceship of the Circus Tent uh, just and spins around in circles, going all the way up, you know, ready to to launch up um, all the way into outer space, and then explodes. Yeah, you know, just when the cops arrive, and but what did you know? It's the circus clown car appears, it crashes down, and that's where we found Dave along with the Truency brothers, so they were safe. So yes, <laughs> they actually escaped through the freezer and they were lucky that they were alive. So it was Dave. So yes, everything was uh, going up from, from the sky, you know, like starting to look like it was snowing, but apparently the pies uh, fell on on them. Yeah, hopefully it's not the ascetic pies, because if they are, yeah, they're going to be, you know, burned. <laughs> anyway. Oh, it's such a crazy movie. It really is, but it really works in so many ways. So I think I pretty much talked about all of that, but, but nevertheless. Such a great cast right there. I mean, yes, the acting was pretty cheesy. I can see that, but that's what they were going for um, but Greg Kramer, Suzanne Snyder great chemistry together, they really worked um, I love the Terenzi brothers played by Michael S. Siegel and Peter Lacassi I mean they were they were hilarious I mean no matter when whenever they pop up on screen you know they, they always give it a laugh you know because <laughs> they also picked up the two fat chicks uh, when they went to Lover's Lane, you know, and speaking through their speakers, you know, just <laughs> it's just having the couples having ice cream, and then <laughs> they were hoping they were going to park there, but then the next thing you know, they went to a drive-in. Okay.
and uh, uh, the kills were actually pretty impressive. Um, definitely one by one, they do a lot of those crazy kills. Um, that's very interesting. It's not not slasher light, but it just but it was almost going for for medium gore there. But luckily, it was medium. Um, so it really worked though, and and the special effects. I mean, they were actually done by Fantasy Two. Yeah, they've been known for working on other special effects for many movies. So they, they use all these other great effects of, of flashing and moving the lights and all that. Um, but they also created, um, but the Chicago Brothers, uh, they, they created the um, all the makeup and clown. F but the rest of the team, yeah, they actually created all the makeup effects. And even the Chicago Brothers had wore uh, one of the clown suits. And even Charles uh, played Jojo the the Clownzilla, yes. <laughs> and then, yeah, which originally was going to be stop motion animation for that, but they didn't have the budget though to do so, so they decided to have them dress up in a clown. You know, creating that performance, so it really worked. And uh, there's other uh, mo moments too. Um, when that one clown was chasing, chasing that guy, yeah. So there was like a car chase, and he was like, he was like moving around, like like he's like he's a car, and crashes, and then the car explodes, yeah, killing one. Oh, there we go. Um, but yeah, it looked like you know they were having fun. I mean, you can pretty much tell. Uh, they shot this movie at uh, Watsonville. And even the the amusement park scene was actually shot at Santa Cruz uh, Beach Boardwalk. Yep, this is the same place where they shot the movie Us and the Lost Boys. So, perfect location. Uh, the popcorn gun that they use for the prop is very expensive. Yeah, they spent a lot of time building that gun. And it's hard to believe considering that the rest of the budget was just as much as they could for that small boat you know because they couldn't afford anything else but they knew what they could do by creating all these other props and stuff uh... they did put in like some goofy music yeah make it more circus like um, so it, it's it works and then of course uh, they even have uh, the theme song by the dickies called you guessed it, the title song, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> um, they even have a music video for that, too. <laughs> yeah. um, but, hey, if you love all these B uh, horror films uh, from 50s, 60s, or any other kind of decade, I mean, because this is going for that style, I mean, this is definitely worth it. I mean, it, it's crazy, but it works. Um, Yes, they do have it on Blu-ray. Uh, Arrow Video just released it uh, recently in 2018, so hopefully you can find a copy for that. And I know there's a DVD release and, and Blu-ray release from MGM. They put it out uh, a long time ago. And you will have all these features included, so chances are. But anyway, it. but yeah, the, the score, of course, was done by John... Masseri, so he, he really created those circus type ones. But, okay. But anyway, check out this film. I mean, you're going to love it. So that's Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and I give it five stars. Why not? <laughs> I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.